Happy birthday. Bon anniversaire. Feliz cumpleaños. Shungri Kwailo. Sal Gra Mubarak. Today, 21 million people across the world will mark their birthdays in many different ways, depending on culture, age, tradition, and of course, lockdown restrictions. There may be cake, candles, cards, and presents. There may be celebration meals, balloons, flowers, and telephone calls. But however we would choose to celebrate our birthday, it commemorates another year of our lives on Earth. But today, there is an additional birthday to celebrate, and that is the birthday of the church. 50 days following the resurrection of Jesus on Easter Sunday, we celebrate Pentecost, when the Holy Spirit descended upon the disciples and other followers of Jesus while they were in Jerusalem. From that moment 2,000 years ago, the church has grown, blessed and brought hope to our world when we have allowed the Spirit in. But also at times hurt, excluded and brought damage to the world when we have shut the door to the Spirit. But today we give thanks that the same Spirit at work in the early church is available to all of us today to tell the story of God's love and grace to our world. It is estimated that there are over 7,000 languages spoken across the globe. Although, as demonstrated by my dubious pronouncing of happy birthday, I am clearly fluent in only my native English. But at that very first Pentecost, people from every nation under heaven understood all that the believers were saying as though God was speaking through them in a way that all those who were listening would understand. The Spirit came as the disciples spoke. It became clear that the message of God was for all people. Over these last months, if you're like me, you will have made more phone calls, more video calls, sent more messages than ever before or to communicate with loved ones. In a bid to stay connected, we have embraced new ideas only possible through 21st century technology. Now, Pentecost is a story of staying connected. Pentecost was God's way of empowering his people to be witnesses in the world, of proclaiming his love to the world and living his truth in our lives, but not in our own strength, only through his spirit. For almost two millennium now, God's presence on earth has not been in the physical person of Jesus, but through God's spirit working in and through us, his children. What a privilege that is to be able to live lives of goodness and grace, to seek to create a little bit of heaven on earth. Teresa of Avila, a 16th century Carmelite nun said this, Christ has no body now but yours, no hands, no feet on earth but yours. Yours are the eyes through which he looks compassion on this world. Yours are the feet which he walks to do good. Yours are the hands through which he blesses all the world. Yours are the hands, yours are the feet, yours are the eyes, yours are his body. Christ has no body now on earth but yours. What a privilege, but what a responsibility, but not one for us to bear alone. One to embrace with God's Holy Spirit working in and through us. Now, some of you may not have seen another person face to face for a long while now. All of us have been alone in some way 
without the usual physical presence of family and friends. But the encouragement and joy in all of this is that even if you have spent every day home alone, you haven't really been alone as God's spirit is with us when we invite him into our lives. Let me share with you such an encouraging verse from the Bible from the Amplified Paraphrase. John 14 verse 26 says this, but the helper, comforter, advocate, intercessor, counsellor, strengthener, standby, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, in my place, to represent me and act on my behalf, he will teach you all things and he will help you remember everything that I have told you. Who hasn't needed a comforter, counsellor and strengthener in these days? In fact, who doesn't always need a comforter, counsellor and strengthener in their lives? That is what we have in God's spirit and that is available to us all. In A. A. Milne's classic, Pib Piglet asks, how do you spell love? Winnie the Pooh responds, you don't spell it, you feel it. Pentecost is the spirit, the present of God's spirit enabling us not to spell love, but to feel it. When we may feel all alone in the world, God promises us that we are not. He says, but when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you will be filled with power and you will be witnesses for me in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Today, as we sit at home, in our gardens, in a park, whether alone with family or friends, we celebrate not just the birthday of the church, but the presence of God's spirit in our lives. And the spirit God has given us does not make us timid, instead fills us with power, love, and self-control, those words that Paul writes to Timothy, a younger colleague and assistant. We give thanks today that we have not been left alone to negotiate the joys and challenges of this life, nor do we have to share his love in our own strength, but through the gift of his Holy Spirit. To finish, let me share with you some words that are the prayer of my heart and perhaps the prayer of yourself too. Holy Spirit, rain down. O oh, comforter and friend, we need your touch again. Holy Spirit, rain down. Let your power fall, let your voice be heard. Come and change our hearts as we stand on your word. Holy Spirit, rain down. May you know the power of God's Holy Spirit in your life today and always. God bless you.